This is Jamie from Stillmeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanisms in Momiji. Momiji is a game that I recently played for the first time by designers Dario Massarenti and Fran Francesco Testini, um, who I've had the pleasure of working with on a future upcoming project here at Stillmeyer Games. But uh, there are a few things that I want to talk about about Momiji. I had a lot of fun with my first play of it. We played a two-player game of Momiji. The core idea in the game is that you are creating stacks of cards, um, the same uh, uh, leaf for each card, so for each stack. So if, if I'm going after purple leaves, all purple leaves will go in one stack. And you are stacking them from zero to three. So the cards are numbered zero, one, two, three. You can put a the same or a higher number on top of a lower number. And the reason you're doing this is at the end of the game, uh, you will score each stack based on a multiplier. And I think this is the first clever mechanism in the game that I really enjoy. The multiplier is the top card on the stack multiplied by the number of cards in the stack. And so if I've stacked a bunch of zeros and ones, and then I top it off with a single two and then a single three, um, say for seven total cards, I would get 21 points for this stack. I think that multiplicative effect of the top card times the number of cards in the stack is really clever. Um, the second thing that I think is really clever about this game is a component use. Whenever you complete one of those stacks, you can see there's a little temple icon up there. And to show that you've completed it, because you can't put more than one three on top of a stack, you put one of these little temple tokens on top of the card, just to note that you have a temple there now. You've completed a stack. However, what I didn't even realize while I was first playing this is that the goals in the game, there are a bunch of goals in this game that vary from, round, from game to game, um, the goals are on the back of these tokens. I think this is, was a really clever uh, component choice. Instead of making two different tokens for this purpose, they have a double use. On the back side are the temples, on the front side are the variable tokens, and there are a bunch of these. So you only need, I think it was three or four in each game, and so you have plenty of these to use for the back side when you're not using the goal side. It's a clever use of components, environmentally friendly choice of not making more stuff than they need to make. Um, the last thing, and my favorite mechanism in this game, is just a little touch, but I realized how much I really like this as, a, as I was playing the game. So one of the things you can do on your turn is to acquire cards. Um, and similar to games like um, Abyss and Conspiracy, your choice is to gain, uh, of the available cards in the supply, you can gain all cards of the same color. Um, so you'll choose one, one stack of cards and you'll gain all cards of one color. So cards accumulate in stacks of the same color, not only in your personal supply, but also in the main supply from the deck as well. Um, and there's no, auto, here's the, the favorite mechanism. There's no automatic refilling of cards. You have to pay one of your points, one of your little acorn tokens. You have to pay one of those cards to reveal more cards. Uh, how many cards do you reveal when you do that? I believe it was three it might be a little bit more. Um, so you're taking three cards off the top of the deck and uh, and, and and gaining and putting them in into the, the leaf cards. Four cards, four cards. So you're revealing four cards from the top of the deck and putting them in those piles. Um, but critically here, you are paying to do it. And I'm differentiating this from a number of other games where there's an automatic refill because in those games, it could end up feeling, uh, and this is many, many games on the market. No, I have no core problem with these games where like when you run out of cards or uh, you, you refill them or, or when you, at the end of every turn, you refill another card. But it ends up being a little tedious. It's one of those things you have to remember you have to, ref you have to refill that thing. You have to slide down the card row to, to fill in more cards, things like that. But in this game, it feels like a reward to do that. It feels like a good thing rather than a task to do because you are paying a little bit. You're paying just one acorn, but you're getting to see four cards all at once. So I love basically that the reef, the card refill, the card row refill is not automatic, that you have to pay a little bit for it uh, if you want to see more cards. And then it also adds that level of choice. Do you want to pay to do that? Because when you pay to reveal those four cards, you're potentially revealing a lot of cards that might benefit your opponents just as much as they benefit you. So there's an interesting choice there too. But most importantly, I just like that you are paying to do it and that it is not a task the game gives you to do. Just a little thing that occurred to me while I was playing, but, uh, but worth making a mental note for me at least as a designer. Those are my favorite mechanisms in Momiji. If you played the game, let me know what you think in the comments below, or if any of these comments, these favorite mechanisms remind you of another game, let me know about that game in the comments below as well. Thanks.